preparing for the winter in the mountains outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm Rosalinda Roman, and this is New Mexicast. Time Welcome back, everyone. And yes, spring change. Hello and welcome back to New Mexicast, the enchanting weekly TV show featuring interesting people and places in New Mexico and beyond. And this week we're going to stick around New Mexico because my family is busy getting ready for the winter. We've already got snow flurries coming down and that means that last weekend we spent a long time chopping wood and splitting wood and getting ready for the cold. Well, usually, traditionally, we would do it by hand, chopping the wood with an axe like that. But now, a friend of mine lent me that lovely machine you see there. It's called a splitter, and it splits the logs for me, basically doing most of the work for us. Well, that's basically the opposite of what this week's episode is all about. I'm calling it Back to Basics, and it's all about people who are doing things with their hands and getting back to the basics of the way things used to be. We begin in a wonderful place near Santa Fe. Enjoy. Truth be told, for Ziva Goldfein and Presley Edwards, just being together and out of school on a beautiful day like this would probably be enough to make them happy. But on this day, these best friends are enjoying something much more meaningful than just a walk in the forest. They are taking a walk back in time. So that's pretty long time. So the people here had to do for themselves. They didn't have stores to go to, no stores at all. They were out in the middle. It's 15 miles from Santa Fe, and that was a whole day's journey. They're on a second grade field trip to El Rancho de las Golondrinas, near Santa Fe, New Mexico. This is the Ranch of the Swallows. Oh, I watched the movie about all this stuff. Where visitors are invited to slow down and learn about what life was like centuries ago. Pumps air into the fire to make it hotter. He uses a bellows to do that. Ross Pope is one of the many docents at the ranch, here to make this more than a trip to a museum. We're here to interpret uh, Spanish colonial history from the er early uh, 1600s through uh, the uh, 1900s through the last of the 1890s. Today he is teaching the kids about blacksmithing. Puts the head on the nail, pulls it off, and voila. Look at that. Just like the Presentations like this are what set El Rancho de las Golondrinas apart. If you look at the head, you can see the hammer marks. We're considered a living history museum, so we try to get people involved in in the actual um, surroundings that they're in and understand what it was like to actually live in that time period or what it took to to survive in New Mexico in the early years. Among the things Ziva and Presley are exploring with their classmates today. Right here while we're making rope and actually we're gonna have the kids make the rope. We're just showing them how. They like to do it. Step by step. Okay, now I need two more workers, okay? With the help of two living history interpreters. Pick up these two ends, okay, no, no, the end. These kids are learning how to use their hands to make things. Way there, that's it. Then ready? Okay, you can spin it this way. Things that weren't always easy to make, but which were needed to survive on a working farm like this. So wait to the back and then keep spinning. Keep twisting as fast as you can. <laughs> wow. Wow. Some of the tasks, like rope making, required physical strength. <laughs> keep turning. Keep turning as fast as you can. That's it. Keep turning as fast as you can. Fast as you can. That's it. Use those muscles. <laughs> Why? 
there were no stores then. So nobody would have worn any kind of clothing like you guys are wearing. While other tasks, like preparing wool for clothes, required more patience and technical skill. Uh, had to make all their own clothing using the wool from their sheep. So you see, it was very important to have a sheep. And some tasks, like blacksmithing, required a bit of both. Excuse me? Hi. What are we doing here? Well, oh, you, you haven't done this before? No. Okay. Well, this probably looks to you like uh, bamboo or perhaps sugar cane, and it's like sugar cane. Now, see that that you have there? This is what they would use in the old days to boil down and get their candy. But before it crystallized and turned into candy like that, it became a molasses or a syrup, like pancake syrup. Yeah. And so what we do is we squeeze the juice out of the cane and it goes into that jar. The juice goes in there and that's what we're going to do. We're going to lift and we're not going to race. We go in a circle. I can't see. Oh, my pillow, my hat keeps on hitting it. Whether it's squeezing sorghum to make sweet molasses It's a Sears Roebuck machine from 1898. So, and it was brought all the way out here into New Mexico so that the folks who lived on these farms here didn't have to go through what they used to. And if you take a look over there, you'll see the old style where they had to pound, pound, pound the uh, sorghum cane using those large logs. And that was certainly a very time-consuming and arduous process, and I'm sure they had developed good muscles using those. Okay, you ready? So, you know what you're making now? Flour. Flour for what? What kind of flour? Corn flour to make. Corn. Or using a grinding stone to turn blue corn into corn flour for tortillas. Corn out of this? What are you going to do with this? You're going to make a doll. Corn has a doll. So rub it, rub it real hard because the two rocks rubbing it is what smushes it. For young visitors like Ziva and Presley, getting the chance to try things out themselves means they are excitedly exploring something new around every corner. Okay, once you have enough powder, call me over. There's two, over 200 acres here in the museum that uh, covers uh, the period from the early 1700s through the 1880s uh, in different sections of the museum itself. Everything that you need. You didn't have a Walmart or a Kmart. This is where you went shopping. And you dressed like this to go shopping. Most of the docents are, uh, try to dress as much as they can in, in uh, period uh, costumes so that uh, people can understand uh, what uh, people were like back in the uh, 17 and 1800s. I use this malacate, it's a spindle that you use to spin yarn from the wool, which is what, this is from a white sheep. Yeah. We have a wonderful weaving group. Uh, we have blacksmiths, of course. Uh, you'll see how they used to make tools and everything they needed to, uh, to farm the land and things like that. But the big thing about this kitchen, we call the shepherd's kitchen, is that this is a shepherd's bed. And in the spring, when the lambs are being born, sometimes we have snow or freezing weather all the way to June. Usually the lambs are being born in April and May. And so you can't leave your baby lambs outside. They freeze to death overnight. So the shepherd would fill this with straw and bring the babies in here. <coughs> and he would sleep right next to them. And then in the morning, he would take them back to their mommies out in the field. We have uh, wonderful gardens and fields that were actually raising crops that they would have raised in the 1700s. Um, we have examples of uh, early schoolhouses. Uh, um, we have uh, placitas and uh, uh, the uh, haciendas that was used uh, to protect uh, the people who lived here on the ranch and how they defended themselves against uh, the environment and the hostile uh, natives in the area. You'll notice here these 
these two big gates, these thick adobe walls, these small high buildings, and also on the corner of the building is this two-story watchtower. And that was all for protection. This is the Sala. This is the room where they lived, where they um, prayed, cooked, ate, and slept at night. They slept it takes a lot of dedicated volunteers and a lot of behind-the-scenes preparations to create this unique learning experience for visitors. The, the training program here is like uh, six weeks long in the winter time that we take classes so that we can help interpret what we're trying to do here. <laughs> Very good. A ranch of the swallows. You know what a swallow is? Excellent. It's a wonderful place to work. It, it's a uh, it's all volunteer uh, virtually. Uh, people have a lot of fun. Uh, great place to meet people and uh, talk about uh, history and just to learn. What does it feel like to the touch? It's cold, but it's on. So the outside is cold? It's like a baby bear. Look at their old corn. It feels warm in there. Oh yeah, it is warm. And learning is the bottom line here. By offering up a hands-on journey into the past, curious learners walk away with something to think about for the future. This must be hard. You have to sleep on the floor. Right. At El Rancho de las Golondrinas, or the Ranch of the Swallows, near Santa Fe for New Mexicast, I'm Rosalinda Roman. <laughs> There were so many wonderful things to see and do at El Rancho de las Golondrinas that my family and I definitely need to make a return visit. I hope you will do the same. It is definitely worth the trip. Coming up after the break, a story about beekeeping. You don't want to miss it. Don't go away. You may not take the school and tie your teacher up. That's right. Picture. Don't give him any ideas. All right. well, this is Okay, and you put this on your back, back up. You gotta back up. Keep backing. Pull you don't back, have to hold back, it with your hand. Back, pull back, pull back. Keep going until it holds down. Let's get this a little even out, okay? Yeah, that's good. So basically, you're a work animal. Hi, because I like a I like a workhorse. Okay, we want to move. You can kind of smell like a horse, uh -oh. Susie. Aww. <laughs> Everything that you'd need. You didn't have a Walmart or a Kmart. This is where you went shopping. And you dress like this to go shopping. Why? Because this is the way you this is the way you dress. Why? Is that the only good part? That's a good question. You don't. Because you didn't have tennis shoes, we're slap happy. Think we've done this a bit? I think so. <laughs>